Welcome to Remnant Online Followers. Please kindly subscribe. Thank you. We were not sent out primarily as preachers. We were sent out as witnesses. We came to the world to prove that God is real and everything God said is true. And the only way we can prove it is by power. This is why Jesus, after training his disciples, he didn't send them out with lecture notes. He said, tarry in Jerusalem until you are endued with power. I know you attended many lectures, but you are not taking lecture notes to the world. You are taking power there. Until the world see power, everything you are saying is tales and fables. This is also a generation that has substituted the approval and the endorsement of men from the approver of God. And so a man does not bother if he has no relationship with God, so long as people are still following him, so long as one or two persons still validate him. And so even our relationships have become fake. When you see somebody relating with somebody, it's because of what he has to gain. And we are audacious enough to teach it as a doctrine. And so today, if somebody tells you he honors you, you can't be very sure there is something he's gaining. If somebody tells you he loves you, you can't be sure there is something he's gaining. Because relationship now is about gain. But in the days of the fathers, they related because vision brought them together. They related because bodies brought them together. They related because there was an agenda that was superior to their personal opinions that bonded them together. This is why they were able to resolve difficult situations. Because they were not in that relationship primarily for natural gain. They were in that relationship because of the gain that it brings to the kingdom. But if we come into that deception that makes everything to be about human approval, then something is wrong. People do things because of what people say. People do things because of the approval of men. The Bible says, woe unto you if all men speak good of you. Human approval may be necessary at some level for kingdom advancement and we teach it, we advocate it, but human approval is not necessarily God's approval. Before you get man's approval, make sure you have God's approval. It's a deception of this age. And God will not approve of you except as you meet the requirements of his spirit. If you meet God's requirement, anywhere you are, God can make you. He said, let us make man. It is God that make men. Let us make man. Follow me, I will make you. He can use men, he can use circumstances. But if he doesn't approve of you and you use any manipulation to get your way through, the day trouble comes, you will collapse like a pack of cards. The reason men stand in trials is because it's God that exalted their heart, not men. If a man makes you, a man can destroy you. But if God makes you, no matter what the devil does, you will be there standing. This is why most of the charade we see today is rampant. Because men are interested only in what men say and not what God says. What God says about you is superior to what the whole world says about you. Jesus fulfilled destiny on the cross. Everybody rejected him, but it was a rejection that he fulfilled destiny. If God gives you favor, that's beautiful. And in wisdom, relate with man. But seek God's validation much more than anything man can give you. And finally, the fifth deception of this age I want to draw our attention to is that we have substituted secret purity for public enthusiasm. That you come for a meeting and people celebrate and on the strength of their expectation and celebration, things happen, does not mean you, are, you have a stand with God. This is a generation where people have lost their relationship with God and all they are doing is to use a lot of manipulation to get people's emotions stirred up. Christianity is not a move of emotion. It can affect your emotion, but it must be a reality in the spirit. And so men must pay the price in the secret place for the presence of God to rest upon them and for their lives to be in accordance to the message they preach. It is first of all the messenger before the message. It is the preacher before the preaching. It is the man before the manifestation. And so if we don't have that secret work with God, then we are not ready to bring message or to bring the counsel of God to our generation. A generation is in trouble. If you probe people's secret life, you'll be amazed. The guy sings very well. People are celebrating. They fall under the anointing. But in that same choir, he has three girlfriends. The man comes to preach. He's very eloquent and robust with his words. But the whole idea behind the preaching is how to extort money from people. There is no work with God anymore. There is no purity of purpose. It is all about human emotion, human enthusiasm, human approval. Something is definitely wrong. It is on account of this error that they need to reveal again the apostolic portrait is upon us. Because it is the apostolic portrait that will take us back to the ground and the place of accuracy in our work with God. If you are still with me, say hallelujah. If you live according to the dictates of this age, be mindful that this age is coming to an end. This age will not be forever. A time is coming when God will draw the curtains for this age. And when that time comes, you will meet something called the throne of God. I told people, the first thing you meet in the gate of heaven is not flowers. It's not the street of gold. The first thing you meet in the gate of heaven is a throne. 
when John went there, he saw a throne. In Revelation 20, the moment the world was summoned, they met a throne. If you are not accurate with God, and this age is brought to an end, every man must pass through that throne. And that throne is a place of verdict. And God help us that when we get there, we'll receive a well done. The Bible said this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached as a witness to all the world. He said, then the end of the age shall come. This is the age that we have found ourselves in. It's a dark age, it's a wicked age, and it has opened up great deception that many are victims of. And this age, as deceptive and, and, and appealing as it may appear, we come to an end, and the time is very short. We are approaching the end of the time, and it is the responsibility of the church to do her work so that that end will come. That responsibility is what you have been invited to be equipped for so that you are not just accurate with God but through your labors this age will come to an end and the government of God will find full expression. Now let's look at the apostolic church very quickly. The purpose of the apostolic church is not miracles. It's not prophecy. The purpose of the apostolic church is not healing. The purpose of the apostolic church is not signs and wonders. These are necessary and they will always be there because of the presence and the power of God. But the purpose of the apostolic church is twofold. Number one is to reconcile the world back to Jesus. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 19, the Bible said to which God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses against them, but he gave unto them the word of reconciliation. And so the apostolic church is saddled with a body, a body of winning as much souls as possible in every era back to God. The second purpose of the apostolic church is in Ephesians chapter 4 from verse 11 to verse 13. He said to some he gave to be apostles, to some he gave to be prophets, to some he gave to be evangelists, to some he gave to be pastors and teachers. He said for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edification of the body of Christ, that we all will come into the unity of the faith, into the knowledge of the Son of God, unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. So the goal of the apostolic church is to bring everyone to the fullness. If you come into the fullness, you will have authority over sickness. If you come into the fullness, you have authority over poverty. If you come into the fullness, you have authority over sin. So our primary objective is not to give you prophecy, but to bring you to discernment where you can tell what the mind of God is concerning your life. Our primary objective is not to bring you healing, it's to bring you to maturity where you walk in divine health because you understand the revelation of the finished works of Christ. Our primary objective is not necessarily to pro prophesy you into prosperity. Our primary objective is to teach you the covenants of the kingdom so that in applying it, you know what to do in order to live a prosperous life. However, the reason we still pray for the sick and prophesy is because we know that we are still growing. There are many that if you wait for them to understand divine health, they will die before they mature. There are many that if you wait for them to understand covenant, they will die of poverty before they ever mature. So the reason we prophesy is to bring intervention. But the goal of our presence, the reason we are here, is not to prophesy. It's not to heal. It's not for wonders. It's for you to become like Christ. So that when you go to Lagos tomorrow, when you enter the market, you meet many Christ there. People are there revealing the character of Jesus. When you go to the bank, you meet many Jesus there. They are revealing the character of Jesus. When you go to the academia, you meet many people there who are manifesting the character of Jesus. If we are reduced to miracles from January to December, we will raise thieves and send them to government. And you will meet a Christian bearing Jesus Christ, but he will be a thief. You meet a Christian bearing Nathaniel, but he will be a criminal. You will meet somebody bearing Paul, but he will be swindling money in the bank. And you ask him, do you know the first Paul? Did you read about the first Paul? They say, Paul and Barnabas, these men hazarded their lives for the kingdom. How come we have Pauls in this generation now that you can't entrust with money? How come we have Barnabases in this generation now that you can't entrust with, with women to disciple? Somebody said it's a discipler. At the end of the day, you come later, you hear stories of abortion and you will be compared to manage it for the sanity of the church. What has happened to us? Because we have left the major priority. And today, people are not even interested in maturity. When they come to church and you are sharing the word of God, they are tired. They want the healing. They want the...
a prophecy, they want a miracle. They don't care about the word of God because we have made them to understand that church is about using God to get what you want. When you finish using God, go back to your business. When you need God again, come back, use him and go back to your business. But that's not the era of the apostolic. The era of the apostolic is to raise many men that carry the badge of Jesus Christ. Anytime you meet them, they don't have to be in the church, but you will know that this one is Christ. I heard a story, a story that I will never recover from. Mahatma Gandhi went to South Africa and he, after reading the Bible and hearing of Jesus, he was so blessed and then he said something, let me go and meet his disciples and see what they look like. The moment he entered the church, he said, I would have become a Christian if I didn't meet one. And he left South Africa to India to trigger a revolution. There were miracles, there were healing, but he couldn't find men that looked like Jesus. And he went back to India. Imagine if Mahatma Gandhi was converted. India alone is about 1.3 billion. His work would have being greater than all the work of all the pastors in Africa. But he didn't meet Jesus. He met miracles. He met prophecy. He met signs and wonders. But everybody he met did not resemble the Jesus he saw. And he said, if this is the end of it, then I don't need the Jesus you preach. If this conference will profit you, then you will stop being a liar. If this conference will profit you, then you will stop being a fornicator. If this conference will profit you, then when we meet you in the market, we shouldn't meet a Lagosian. We should meet a Christian. There are too many Lagosians in Lagos. On Sunday, the whole cathedral is apart. But on Monday, you can't find one Christian. If your car is wind down, they will steal your phone. Check the person's name if it's caught. The name is Nathaniel. How did you come about that name? You didn't come to the apostolic church. You find a lady by the street side who is a harlot. Ask for her name. It's Martha. How did you get that name? You didn't come to the apostolic church. You were brainwashed in a religious environment, but you don't know Jesus. If the apostolic church emerges, you, will, you can send anybody to anybody you know that this one carries Jesus. I don't need to probe anything about you. I know that this one carries Jesus because everyone will become like the Christ. That is the focus of the apostolic church. And the beauty is this. If we become like Christ, even our needs will be met because Christ had no needs. When Jesus came to the water, he walked on it. When Jesus needed bread, he multiplied it. And Jesus was never sick. So it's not a disadvantage to become like Jesus. It's actually a great advantage. And so the emphasis of the apostolic church is to win the world to Christ and to make the church become the image of the invincible God. If this is achieved, then we have concluded our, concluded our, 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 our assignment. And if this kind of church emerges, there are eight characteristics. I'm going somewhere, that's why I'm trying to pace. There are eight characteristics you will find when you come to the apostolic church. Number one, the apostolic church is a church of power. Because anybody who comes into the fullness of the Christ will manifest the power of the Holy Spirit. This is why after Jesus trained them, he told them in Luke 24, 49, wait until you are endued with power. You have good lecture notes, but you need power. Power is my signature over this church. If this church does not have power, the gate of hell will prevail against her. This church needs power in order to represent me. After Jesus resurrected in Acts 1, 8, he said, wait, not many days from now, you shall receive the Holy Ghost and power and you shall be witnesses unto me. Because it takes power to be a witness. If you don't have power, you can't represent Jesus. If you don't have power, you can't be a witness. What makes you a witness is the power that you carry in your spirit. Even Jesus himself walked on the earth for 30 years, but Zebulun was in darkness. But the moment he returned in the power of the spirit, he said the land of Zebulun, the land of Naphtali, by the way of the sea beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people that sat in darkness have seen a great light. The apostolic church is a church of power. That's the first characteristic of the apostolic church. You can't say you are an apostolic generation and all you are speaking is English language. He said, the words I speak to you, they are not Aramaic. They are spirit, they are life. When I talk, life goes forth. When I talk, things change. When I talk, things happen. And the church I want to build is a church of power that the gate of hell might not prevail against it. See, if all you were dealing with were men, English would have been sufficient. We are not dealing with men alone. What we are dealing with are not just spirits, but they are princes. Princes. When you start studying the demonic realm, see, when God gave the first Adam dominion, he had dominion over the birds of the air, the fish in the sea, and the things that creep on the land. He was thrown in naming apples. When he opened the gate and Satan entered, he became a slave because that guy is not a goat. That guy is a prince in the spirit. 
and if you study the demonic realm you have demons you have principalities you have powers you have rulers of darkness you have spiritual wickedness in heavenly places so if you think it's about english when you meet spiritual wickedness in heavenly places you will know that cancer can be created in a demonic laboratory when you meet spiritual wickedness in heavenly places you will know that poverty can be cooked in a lab somebody can chant incantation and shut the door over a lineage and for 80 years everybody will be sick at the age of 15 and then you come to confront that kind of spirit and you come with english language i studied in harvard i studied in oxford what's your name how are you doing when you speak you will go dumb what you carry to your world is power tarry in jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high I read English, I read philosophy, I'm a physicist, I'm a neurosurgeon. Wait until a witch meets you. A witch of 10 years can diffuse the power of a professor of 80 years because they are operating from two different realms. And so if you want to be relevant, you need something called power. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 2 from verse 1, he said, when I came unto you, I did not come with excellency of speech declaring unto you the counsel of God. He said, I choose to know nothing again about you but Christ and him crucified. He said, my preaching and my teaching, they were not with enticing words of human wisdom. They were the demonstration of the spirit and power that your faith will be built in the wisdom of God and not the wisdom of men. If we come to church every day and we don't see power, we'll become philosophers. We will speak good English, we will sound intelligent, but the word will cripple us. And so when the apostolic church rises, even the usher will be a carrier of power. The man at the generator room will be a carrier of power. Power is not for prophets and evangelists. He said, these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, they shall cast out devils. If they shall, they shall speak in new tongues. If they walk upon scorpions and serpents, it shall by no means hurt them. If they drink any deadly thing, they shall not be hurt. If they lay hands on the sick, the sick shall recover. So everybody in apostolic church is a creature of power. The gospel is not a move of language. It's a move of power. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It is the power of God, not to salvation, to everyone, to everyone that believes. And so in the apostolic church, everyone is a carrier of power. If somebody is preaching and demonstrating power, it's for the purpose of order. Because all of us won't preach at the same time. But what he's doing is something any other person can do. That's the apostolic church. This is why in the apostolic church, you don't have superstars. Everybody is a star. We don't shine in church, we shine in the world. The error has come. When people will not be known by their names anymore, but by their manifestation. They say, henceforth, know we no man after the flesh. The era has come when we'll stop having few superstars in church. If it is about prophesying, anybody can prophesy. In fact, when we come to church, the church is called the ecclesia. It's the ecclesia. We are not members, we are citizens. And so when you look at the left, left those sitting at the left may be custodian of prophecy. Those sitting by the right will be custodian of the healing power. Those sitting by the other side will be custodian of prosperity power. This is how the church is known. They said the sons of Isaac. They had understanding of times and seasons. So if you are sitting in the side of Isaac, they know that direction is there. If you need direction, meet anybody there. The sons of Isaac, they have understanding of times and seasons. He said the scepter shall not depart from Judah until Shiloh comes. So if you want to see monarchy, if you want to see rulership, find Judah. When you get there, anybody who talks to you talks as a king. And where the word of the king is, there is power. Who can say unto him, what does that? That's the shape of the apostolic church. We are custodians of power. When we start praying, somebody's eyes open. He begins to see the future. When we start praying, somebody's intellect open. He knows the business to go into. When we start praying, somebody's hands begin to burn. Anybody who is sick, he can touch. And they are here. That's when the full counsel of God begins to manifest. And so this kind of church knows no lack. If you need power, men carry it. Need direction, men carry it. Need favor, men carry it. They can tell you, are you looking for the fruit of the womb? Meet the ushers. There are three people there. If they talk to you, you must have a child. Zako parate. Zeliga paete. Azazana karak. Yelelalos. Are you looking for healing? Service have started. We don't want to disrupt the teaching. Go and meet the janitor. The guy in the generator room, if he lays hands on you, whatever it is, you'll be healed. And so when you hear testimony, it's not Papa did this. Papa said that. No, no. The usher spoke to me and I got the appointment. The cleaner spoke to me and I got the visa. The janitor laid hands on me and cancer disappeared. That's the apostolic thought. Anybody you see can do anything by the Spirit. 
because every one of us have come into the fullness of the measure of the stature of Christ. This is not a church of mediocres. It's a move of God's power. A move of God's power. A move of God's power. A move. He said, this sign shall follow them that believe. Anyone who believes is a carrier of signs. He said, go into the world and be witnesses. You are in politics, you are a witness. You are in the academia, you are a witness. You are in the economy, you are a witness. That's the apostolic church. The power is not for a miracle service. It's for everyday living. Jesus walked power in the market. He walked power on the sea. He walked power in a straight line. He's not limited to a location. It is what you carry. It responds anywhere, anytime. But it is the seal of the apostolic church. It's a church of power. This is why in the apostolic church, the Bible said there was none among them that lacked. People who were possessors of land, who should save their houses, save their properties. They saw somebody else who didn't have food to eat. They went and sold their lands, broke their fixed deposit, and they didn't use the money for a better investment. They brought the money to church, dropped it at the apostles' feet, and he said, even distribution, even distribution was not supernatural. It was orchestrated by love. And so you don't come to an apostolic church when one person has billions, he doesn't know what to do with it. Whereas visibly, so many others are hungry. The love is not there. And because we don't love ourselves enough to be compelled to do something for one another, that's why we can afford to gossip one another. How could you open your mouth to speak against your sister? Biological relationship today is stronger than spiritual relationship and it ought not to be so. If it is your father, will you gossip? If it is your sister, will you gossip? But a sister, you see people gather together. People who have not preached Christ have preached another sister more than they have preached Jesus. Somebody falls, it becomes a testimony. When we should be laboring in prayer to see that that falling soldier stands, there's no forbearance, there's no patience. There's no kindness. There's no goodness. If you study the characteristic of love, when Paul wrote about love, I sat down, I studied the scripture and I said, what is this possible? That was when I knew that love was spiritual. Because these people knew they learned the breadth, the width and the depth of the love of God. That was why Paul called love forgiveness. He called love faithfulness. He called love patience. He called love every quality of the, of the spirit of God. He is called love. And when you come to an apostolic church, people strive to be like that. How much patience can you show to a sister? Jesus was speaking. He said, if a brother errs against you 70 times, 7 times in a day, forgive him. That's 490 times in one day. What if you have 10 brothers? To show you the level of tolerance that was taught in an apostolic community. Paul said, if I give my body to be bought and I have not love, it profits me nothing. He said, I may know all knowledge. I may have all prophecy. He said, but if I have not love, it profits me nothing. See, this idea of priding ourselves in mysteries and revelation, if there is no love, it's like a clanking symbol. The apostolic church has no regard for a revelation that is not taught in love. The apostolic church has no regard for a prophecy that is not given in love. Administration is superior to revelation. So much knowledge, but no love. And so you come, you see bitterness, you see envy, you see backbiting. The church in Corinth, people began to fight and Paul rebuked them. Don't think you gain relevance with me by fighting. No, this is a church of love. We forbear with one another. They say forbear with one another. Carry one another's body. That is when you will fulfill the law of Christ. The law of Christ is the law of love. How many persons have you forgiven? How many persons? I, why, why are Christians not afraid to speak against other Christians? It's a law in the spirit. He said he rebuked kings for their sake. And he said, touch not my anointed. Every one of us here that has the Holy Ghost is anointed. How are you not afraid to speak against God's anointed? This is not about a prophet or an apostle. This is about brotherly love. You should be pricked in your heart if something goes wrong with your brother. It's never a testimony. It's never a testimony in any quarters. And the apostolic church is a church of love. It's a church of love. Somebody can give his last cash to another person and trek home. He is overjoyed doing it because love compels him. There is tenderness of heart. There is brotherly compassion, brotherly affection with one another. That's an apostolic church. Love is superior to gifts. They call it the most excellent gift. They say pursue after charity. That is superior to all the gifts of the Spirit put together. You come to church, somebody is in church. He has a house gear who comes to the same church. The house gear uses a soap that is different from his children. And they say he's a man of God. He's speaking in capital letter tongues. And something as small as soap 
house gear can't use the same soap and the same house gear comes to your church with you Paul was writing when he sent Onesimus to Philemon he was writing he said this guy was your servant but now he's not returning in the statue of a servant he is coming now as a brother how did a servant become a brother it is called love that is the kind of love that exists in the apostolic church and it is that love that makes us become brother on what on what ground can you call Jesus your brother your creator your Lord your Savior what makes Jesus becomes our brethren because love is the equalizer it is in love that status is removed it is in love that rank is removed it is in love that we become brothers and sisters and if you can't find that depth of love then what we are doing is not an apostolic church the apostolic church is a church of love number three the apostolic church is a church that gives we are not looking for the agenda of God to be advanced by any politician coming from anywhere to bless us if they are led of God and they have credibility we will send them out but we know that all the words we are looking for is here it's as we give that we grow to give more and so anybody who is trained and taught the way of the apostles there is nothing he cannot part ways with why because we understand our giving from a superior perspective number one our giving is an act of honor to God we don't donate to church we honor the Lord with our substance and with the first fruit of all our increase number two our giving is an act of worship to our God Number three, our giving is a testimony that our heart is in the kingdom. Because where a man's treasure is, that's where his substances will be. Number four, giving is an act of faith for us. We know we walk, but we know our sufficiency comes from heaven. It is our God that supplies our needs. And so every time we give to him, we are testifying that our faith is in him, not in the systems of this world. When we give, he has a deeper meaning. Why do you think God is interested in money? The motive for your giving is superior to what you gave. When you give, God is in faith. God is in honor. God is in worship. When you give, finally, it's a sign that you are mature. Because you now know that God's agenda is your personal responsibility. You are not looking for anybody to come and advance it. You know this is my assignment. Number four, the apostolic church is a praying church. It's not meant for us to give ourselves to tables. We'll give ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the world. They went from house to house. Acts 2.47 breaking bread and praying and praising God and God added to the church daily such as you be saved the prayer did not reduce because of the number the prayer rather increased you come to church today the smallest meeting is a prayer meeting there's only few that value prayer enough to come and so because we can't manage it anymore we now have prayer band there's nothing like prayer band in the apostolic church everybody prays if you don't have the stamina to pray how can you walk with God because they know God beyond what they were told. They know him by encounters. John said that which was from the beginning, which we heard, which we looked upon, and our hands handled. For you to handle, you must engage that spirit. And so what they did in the apostolic church is to compare everybody to pray so that they too will encounter and handle. I can tell you about God, but there will be great limitation in what I can tell you. You too must appear there and see him for yourself. He said they go from strength to strength. Every one of them in Zion that appeared before the Lord in the apostolic church Prayer is a menu for everybody. We pray and we pray more. And we pray much more. And we pray even much, much more. Because one of the things that shows that you have the strength of God is how much of it you deploy on the altar. Nobody can be an accurate participator in the apostolic church without praying. The apostolic church is the church of the world. The world is taught in its clearest form. Everybody knew the world. We will not give ourselves to tables, Acts 6 4, but to prayer and to the ministry of the world. They preached the word and they kept preaching. One night, Paul was preaching in the village and was teaching. Somebody, Eutychus, slept, fell down and died. They fell on him, carried him up. He didn't wake up till the next morning. They were still teaching. In the morning, he woke up. Nobody was surprised. They will wake up after all. But the point is that even as they were sleeping, he was teaching. Because if the devil sows, why men slept? God too knows how to sow when men sleep. Today you come to church because we don't have stamina to engage the world. Fiji starts 10 p.m. And when Fiji starts, we'll act drama for two hours. We will dance and dance for two hours. When it is 4 a.m., pastor will come up with suit and share the world for 30 minutes. Because if he starts teaching from 6, people will go home. Because people are not interested in growing and in handling the word of life. If you come to the apostolic church, you see until I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, and to doctrine. He said, give thyself wholly to these things 
that your profiting may be made manifest to all. Everybody gives attendance to the world. Because that is where the issues of life flow from. It's a study to show yourself approved unto God. A watchman that did not be ashamed, rightly dividing. Everybody could divide the word of truth. Today, people want to marry. What did God say about marriage? They don't know one. But they are looking for who will prophesy marital breakthrough and lay hands on them. And because they have small money to give us seed, they think that's enough. And you'll see marriages today in crisis, homes are being broken every day because people didn't enter with understanding. Somebody wants to start a business, no revelation at the foundation. He is looking for somebody who will give him anointing oil. And because there are many hungry pastors looking for money, they will carry anointing oil like a jerry can and prophesy and give the person to go and start business, but no word. No word. And so we open systems that God does not know about because there's no revelation underneath it. That is not the portrait of the apostolic church. In the apostolic church, everyone is a candidate of the world. Number six, the apostolic church is a soul winning church. In Acts 2, 41 to 44, after Peter spoke, 3,000 was added to the church. In Acts 4, verse 4, they spoke, 5,000 was added to the church. In Acts 6, verse 7, a great company of the priests became obedient to the faith. In Acts 13, 44, a whole city came to them. It was a church that was drunk and driven by mission. You can't be part of the apostolic church for one year. You have not won one soul. And you come to church every day. They say in the name of Jesus, somebody will prosper. You say, Amen. You are a user of God. Thank you for watching. Please kindly like, comment, subscribe, and turn on your notification bell so you always get notified whenever we post a new video. And don't forget to share. Thank you.